Hello, my dear YouTuber friends, and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video, which is Back to Basics with Microsoft Flight Simulator Part 8. It's been a while since our last Back to Basics video. With this one, we're going to be learning about VOR to VOR flying using the dials in the Cessna 152. No fancy smancy autopilot here, no route setup either. We're just going to be doing pure VOR to VOR flying using the dials. It's quite a, a complex subject, so I'm going to try and help it to make sense to new players or returning players to Flight Simulator. So let's not dilly dally. Let's get on with the video. Okay, so before I jump into a flight and show you VOR to VOR in practice, I just want to give you some theory, theory on what VORs are. I've just got a website open, skyvector.com. I'm not going to pay any significance to this website. It's just uh, given me a map with VORs on it. That's why I've opened it. You can use any map, any of, if you're using one already that shows VORs, that's fine. If you look around the map, you can see different VORs, which are these circles with a square in the middle of them let's zoom in on one there's one up here and there's usually a range so there's a trent vor there's usually a frequency next to it it's essentially they will all have frequencies so these are radio frequencies that you dial in in the aircraft on your nav radios and then you can lock on to the vors so there's one there they're scattered all around the world this is just england there's another one there daventry there's more there, more towards the London area. There's one there, Crompton, I believe it is. Yep, or Compton. And different ones scattered around the map, and scattered around the world, in fact. Let's just switch web pages. Just to show you a visual picture of what a VOR hit is and how it operates. The way we learnt it is like a, a bicycle wheel. You have the centre of the wheel and you have sp the spokes of the wheel all pointing out like this. In a VOR, these are called radials, and there's 36 of them, as you can see, for every 10 degrees of the compass there. And if you're flying anywhere, and the VOR is within range, you can pretty much lock in, dial in the frequency of the VOR, and you can lock in on one of the radials and fly towards the VOR. And if you reach the center, or if you want to, you can actually fly away from it. I'll be showing you this and how you can tell this in the Cessna 172 in a moment. But that's essentially what VORs are. If you think of them as like a, a bicycle wheel with spokes or radials all pointing out, you can lock onto one of them, fly towards it or fly away to it, fly away from it. And there's different VORs, as I've mentioned, all around the world. That's England. Let's pop over to France. You can see more VORs here. And they have a meaty range of about 200 miles. So if I locked onto this VOR from England, flew over to it, I can then lock onto this VOR, fly over to that, lock onto this VOR, fly over to that, etc, etc, and actually fly around the world, which I used to do this VOR flying in the Flight Simulator 2 days on the Commodore 64. So listen, that's essentially what VOR, VORs are. Uh, head over to a web page that shows you VO, VORs on a map. Something like skyvector.com is fine. What we'll do now is jump into the sim and show you VOR flying in practice. Okay, so I'm lined up at runway 33 at Birmingham in the pretty and pink or purple Cessna 152. Why not? Let's just jump into the cockpit. First thing I'm going to do is press my B button. Because my altitude wasn't correct. It's correct for the airport we're at, so that's good. What I'm going to do first is draw your attention to this top dial. That's our nav. Effectively, let's keep it simple. That's our nav one dial. 
So whatever frequency we got dialed in there, we do have a default frequency, but nothing's picking up in the area. That's our nav one, that's our nav two. This dial is actually called CDI. It's a CDI da a dial, which stands for Course Deviation Indicator. And the reason for that, if you saw my ILS landing video in a Cessna 152, I'll link it in the top right there. You can see that these needles, once we're locked onto a frequency, an active frequency, and I'll show you that in a second, these needles will divert left or right. With an ILS, you've got this one going from left to right. You have to, you have to take that into consideration with ILS to give your altitude. Uh, towards the actual runway you're landing at. We're not going to be concentrating on ILS in this video. The only needle that we'll be concentrating upon is that one from going from top to bottom, left to right. That's our horizontal bearing. And essentially that will divert left or right the closer we get towards, in this case, a VOR. So it's basically that's where the name comes from, course deviation indicator. And the other thing we'll be concentrating upon here we won't be using this dial, we're not going to be using NAV2, just NAV1, so it'll just be this dial, this CDI1, in effect. The only other thing we're going to be doing is this OBS knob. Now this will change, let me just talk about this for a second, I'll show you this in practice in a moment. This will change our reference bearing here, it's Omni Bearing Selector. It will change our reference bearing up here, but not our compass. Our compass is our compass. If we, we're heading towards uh, 300, 330 degrees at the moment, on runway 33, of course, if we bank left or right, our compass will change with us. That's independent from this. This is a bearing that you can change yourself to give yourself a bearing, as I'll show you in a moment, so towards the center of the VOR. So you're changing this, and then the CDI will tell you what bearing to turn to to lock onto the center of the VOR. This will make more sense once I, once I enter a frequency, I hope. But let's first go to our map screen. Just to refresh our memory. Remember, this map is just a reference map. It's not a moving map. It's affecting nothing in the simulator. It's just a map, basically, that I've got up. This might as well be a paper map. But it's just a map. You use whatever map you prefer. We're at Birmingham International Airport. We're heading in this direction, runway 33, a northerly direction. You can see our closest VOR is the Honolulu VOR. It's right next to the airport. And it's in a direction of a southerly southeast, about 150, 160 degrees. That's north, east, southwest, of course. So the map's facing north upwards. It's about 150, 160 degrees from our bearing at the moment. So keep that in mind. And the frequency, we have to take a note of that. 113.65. 113.65. So with those two things, bearing, bearing those two things in mind, let's get back to the sim. I'm going to alter, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to alter our NAV1 standby frequency. This is NAV1, you probably know by now, I hope. If you don't, I'll talk you through it. This is our NAV1 station, that's our NAV2. We're going to ignore NAV2 in this video, but you can use it if you want to. This is our standby. When we alter this with our knobs, I could use the radio panel here. I don't have it connected and I want to make it accessible for Xbox and PC users. People without the radio panel, so I'm going to use the physical knobs. As I alter these knobs, so I'm going to alter it there, the outer knob, for the numbers after the decimal, the inner knob for the numbers before, are uh, frequency we want to alter it to is 113.65 so that's correct when i press this button it will change it from the standby to the in use the active the one we'll be using so i'm going to press that button there swap nav that's now our active nav one frequency so if i come back to this dial here our cdi one you can see some things have changed now you've got a from tab here, that's important. That's because, like I mentioned, this is our reference bearing. 
it doesn't affect anything in the aircraft it's just telling you what bearing you're heading what bearing you need to head towards uh, this is our actual bearing our compass bearing the direction we're heading in I can use this OBS knob to change by mousing up in this case uh, reference CDI bearing like I said when I change that it's altering nothing in the aircraft apart from that bearing but I'm doing this to, firstly to get towards about 150 160 degrees which I told you is the uh, roughly where the Honolulu VOR is located from our current uh, direction I'm using that but I'm also trying to get this from tab to change to 2 which it should do in a moment. So let me just keep mousing it up. There you go, it's changed to two. It, what it's telling us here, all it's telling us, this CDI dial, is if we change our bearing in our aircraft, if we take off, bank towards this bearing, which is roughly an easterly direction, we'll be heading somewhat towards the Honolulu VOR. Not directly towards it. To do that, we'll have to mouse up a bit further. Keep mousing up. Until this needle gets towards the centre. Keep mousing up. There we go. It's coming towards the centre now. I'll get it centred, roughly. And what that's telling us now, if we take off... We're heading towards uh, 330 degrees at the moment. If we take off and bank to the left, say, towards about 160 de degrees, we'll be heading directly towards the centre. Let me just show you. We'll be heading towards the centre of that VOR, which, as you can see from our direction we're heading in at the moment, if we turn about 150 degrees, we'll head towards the centre. So this signal here, right in the centre of the VOR, that's what that CDI is telling us. So it's not affected anything in the aircraft, keep that in mind. The only thing it's affected, it's now telling us to get to the centre, because we've lined it up to the centre of that VOR. This is the bearing we need to turn to in our aircraft. I do hope that's clear. It's a difficult one to explain. I've been doing it for a number of years. But if you need to re-watch that part and you can watch other videos around the internet on that, I'm just going to throttle up and release my parking brake, raise my flaps as I always forget to raise them in flight otherwise, <laughs> or typically, and we don't need flaps on this runway. Get to takeoff speed, and I'm going to turn to a bearing of that reference CDI, what the CDI is telling me to turn to. So that will do for a two. That was quite a sharp takeoff, but never mind. Just trim up a little bit. I want to climb to around 2,000 feet, which will be a good altitude. Bank into my left. By the way, live weather, live multiplayer, North Europe server, as always. So we may see, typically people catch me flying. We may see one or two familiar faces from the Discord or from the YouTube comments. And people are welcome to do that. That's why I fly in live multiplayer. Anyway, let's get back to what we're doing before we lose the the thread there. And banking towards 160. You can see that needle has come slightly to the red left now. It's diverted, essentially, to the left a little bit. That's because the relative position of our aircraft has changed from when we actually centred that needle. Again, that's quite difficult to get your head around. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to come past that reference, what it's telling us to fly to, slightly more left, to try and coax, that'll do, try and coax that needle back into the centre, rather than mess around with knobs and goodness knows what. This is the proper procedure, I believe. I'm going to coax, coax it back towards the centre. Once that needle starts moving back towards the centre, I'm going to try and match my actual bearing to the reference bearing, and that needle should be centred, and that means we'll be heading towards the centre of that VOR. We are quite close to that VOR, as you saw on the map. It's right next to the airport, so 
This needle's going to be more sensitive. Because we're quite close to it, so it's going to divert quite a lot. Move to the left or right. So, shouldn't be too difficult. Let's just uh, throttle back a bit and trim down a little bit, because I'm at my reference altitude there. Don't trim down too much now. Should be fine. There we go. So I've just banked it to the right and altering my altitude there, trimming. And that needle is roughly now, as you can see, centred. So we're heading directly towards the centre of that VOR. I do hope this is making sense. So it's a difficult concept to get your head around straight away. It does take a bit of practice. If you just follow what I'm doing here, perhaps... Okay, my cat was just uh, joining me there, but just run out again for some reason. It's a bit of a spooked cat. It keeps uh, <laughs> every time I move, it jumps. Uh, sometimes, anyway, I'm sure he'll be fine. I'll go get a bit of a view outside. Recording this in OBS, it can be a bit. Jumpy in OBS sometimes, I'm keeping an eye on that, trying to get the best settings still. Anyway, okay, concentrate on what we're doing, we're flying towards the sensor. That needle's becoming more sensitive now, I can see it's diverted to the right. Soon it's going to become very sensitive, we're going to reach the sensor. This will go blank, and you'll get a from tab here, which means we would have passed through the sensor of that VOR, and we're heading away from the sensor. That's going to happen imminently. Watch my altitude there. That's fine. Any second you'll see that needle become more sensitive. Take a quick look outside to the outskirts of Birmingham. Lovely countryside. Lovely. Okay, yeah, the needle's becoming more and more sensitive now. It's starting to go left quite a bit, and I'm pretty much staying in the same direction. So any second. Plank it to the left as well, and I know that needle's becoming very sensitive now because we are right. That's a good indicator to tell you how close you are to the centre. The needle really starts to divert quite a lot. Or divert, deviate quite a lot, rather. So I'll just bank to the left. I'm not, it'll be a waste of time trying to coax that needle back in now because we are, I know from the way it's behaving, it's getting very close to the centre there, as I've mentioned. Any second, that should go blank and we should get... Oh, okay, it's coming back towards us now. That's okay, okay. Maybe we weren't... Yeah, still acting very sensitive, that needle, as you can see. Very sensitive. Ah. I'm going to give up chasing it because that will, we will be passing through the centre. Let's actually watch this. There we go. Went blank. In a moment you'll get a from tab. It means we've passed through the centre of that VOR. We're now heading away from the centre. Okay, so now let's just pause the sim. Get you back in the map view. Because now, okay, we're here roughly. Like I said, this is not a moving map. It's just a map. But we're here, we've just passed through the centre of that VOR. So now what do we do? Well, we can go and find another VOR. A bit further away, the range of these are quite strong. You can get a long range on these VORs, about 200 miles. So we should be able to lock on to this Bovington VOR near London. Which is 11375. It's roughly the same direction. 11375. So what I'll do is go back into the sim, unpause it, and go to our radio uh, panel here, and I'll use the standby, 113, 
seven five and put it to my active. There we go. You can see the CDI needles changed again now. We're heading, like I said, in the general direction, so we're going to towards it. I'm just going to use this OBS again. Be more in a sort of why would it be south? Easterly? I don't know. Let's just ah, oh, there we go. Bit of trial, a trial and error to see when that needle will start moving towards the centre. When it moves towards the centre, if you do this, make sure you've got the two tabs showing, so you're heading towards it. So if I turn to reference up about 130 degrees, like I said, we're quite close. Ooh, look at that cloud. We're quite close towards it, so I just need to bank slightly to my left. And now we're heading in a different direction. So versatile VOR flying, and the beauty is, you don't have any course setup, you don't have any autopilot, it's just you and the aircraft, it's you, man and machine, basically, flying in perfect harmony, roughly, <laughs> just you and the machine, the aircraft is relying completely on you to guide it via these CDIs these nav dials towards the right direction and you can fly like I said around the world using VOR navigation so a couple of things I want to bring to your attention here one thing is once because we're quite far away let me remind myself from the Bovingdon uh, from the Bovingdon VOR we're quite a distance maybe over a hundred miles or so this needle is not going to divert much left or right. It's going to stay pretty much centred at this distance. Once we get closer, that's where it starts to divert left or right. Or deviate. Keep saying divert. Keep deviate left or right. <laughs> Once we get a bit closer from this distance, you, it's going to stay pretty much centred. And you can just have a relaxing flight flying towards it. One thing I will say for my regular viewers and Discord members, practice this VOR flying because I'm likely to bring it into a future live stream. Don't know when, and it may not be the Cessna 152 either, and a number of aircraft support it. I'm thinking of making a live stream with just VOR flying and testing people's skills. But it's a lovely way to fly. Listen, you know what? I'm going to leave that running. Oh, now the wind's blowing me. Let's just pause it. I'll come back and I could be tipped upside down otherwise. I'll go back to the map screen. And you know what? I've now changed my mind. I'm heading towards here. So I've flown through Honolulu, which is there. Heading towards Bovingdon. So basically from here to here. I've changed my mind. I want to head towards the west of London. The Compton VOR. Which is 11435. So I'm going to enter that into my uh, sim. So let me just get you back to the sim. There we are. And pause it. 11435, I believe. Let me just remind myself. 11435. So I'll change these numbers, 1143535, change it to my active, again, the needles have changed now, we're still heading to, because we're heading in that general direction, but we need to bring it round to more a southerly direction to get it centred, get the needle centred, to give us a reference heading we need to turn to, to head towards the centre of that VOR. What's that, about 170 degrees or so? So what I'll do is bank to my right. And follow that heading. As simple as that, we're following a different VOR. We're going in a different direction. It's diverting slightly to the right because the relative you know, times pass by and my relative position of the aircraft has changed because I'm turning. So I'll just bank it a little bit more to the right, past that reference. So maybe just bang on south on the actual compass heading. To coax that needle back into the centre. We're still quite a distance from that uh, 
Consum VOR. So I'm not going to worry about it. It won't uh, divert. Deviate. <laughs> I keep saying divert. Won't deviate too much at the moment. Practice, practice, practice. You can do this all around the world. It's all over the Europe, all over America, Australia. You may find in some areas that uh, VORs are further apart, further apart than in other sort of densely populated areas. So England, they're quite close together. Ireland, they're quite far apart. If that happens, fly away from... Uh, a VOR that you're flying to, fly to it, fly away from it, and then input the frequency for the other one until you can pick it up. Typically, they're close enough so that you can pick them up from one to the other. Typically. It's a lovely, satisfying way. Listen, that is the basis of VOR flying. Now, let me just get a recce on this airport here. This looks quite a good airport to land at. I've showed you the basis of it. I'm just going to throttle back a bit here and trim up a little bit just to keep my uh, altitude, but lower my speed so I can get to flaps one. Easy enough in the Cessna. Let's just do an emergency landing over here. I've showed you how to get from VOR to VOR. I could continue, but I'm going to leave it up to you now to go and practice this yourself. Go and fly towards... London, maybe. I showed you the London or the VOR near, near London. Go choose a VOR near London. Fly towards it. Maybe just go and fly at familiar airports. This is not familiar to me. I've just spotted it. So I'm just going to try and uh, configure myself for a landing. Oh, I've got some flaps one there. Why not? First stage of flaps. <laughs> Look at this. In a Cessna 172, you have so much time. I mean, that airport was right next to me, but so much time to configure myself and get myself lined up for it. It's uncanny, really. Uncanny. I believe the runway is right. Yeah, I can land on this runway right here. So the direction that's going in. No worries. Yeah, practice, practice, practice those VORs. I won't continue flying because, you know, I've given you the idea of how to lock onto each one and follow each one. Uh, but very much going to leave it up to you now to go and enjoy the pleasures of VOR flying. It really is lovely. It's like, to me, it's the ultimate way to fly. Just man and machine. You've got to input the frequencies, you've got to change the VORs, the CDI reference, and goodness knows what, and you've got to tell the plane what to do. There's no autopilot. It's a beautiful way to fly. See the airport because of the frame of the aircraft, but I believe I'm kind of lined up for it. Let's just throttle back a little bit more there. And actually just go to my second stage of flaps, why not? Slow myself down even more. Ah, lots of time. <laughs> look, look how much time we got. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. It's just like floating in minutes. It's almost like hovering. Although we are moving forward, of course. You get that sense of hovering. You kind of meditate many times, landing in a system 172, 152. Such a relaxing feeling. But most people, I know some people panic landing. It's like the... Uh, the ultimate test, of course, of flying. It's okay getting yourself around from A to B, but it's actually landing the aircraft back down again, but I just find it a, a meditative experience. Especially when you've got such a lovely runway like that coming up. Lovely. A bit high on the pappies, not following the pappies. This is an emergency landing, clear the runway. There are plenty of time. Roughly the right speed. Altitude I'll bring down a little bit more now. Don't need to do another stage of flaps, I don't think. I'm quite okay there. Just 
so sure we are. Absolutely fine. Lovely, lovely. Very immersive. And then just float till I stall on the runway when near enough. Oh, that'll do fine. Okay, so there we are. So that's the basis of VOR flying. Like I said, give it a go. It's a lovely way to fly. It's one of the fundamental skills you should be learning in an aircraft. It's what we had to learn back in the day in the old flight sims. Uh, flight Simulator 2, Flight Simulator 1, even Flight Simulator 95, although that did have some kind of uh, autopilot. This might be one of my viewers, it may be. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the video. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, many more Flight Simulator videos on their way. And I'll see you soon.